Hi, it's Mark for Ableton Daily. Creating drones with the operator instrument in Ableton Live. The operator instrument can be purchased standalone from the Ableton.com website. Okay, just sit back and relax. I recommend a nice set of headphones and just a nice quiet place where you can work and enjoy the soundscapes. Let's go ahead and listen to the sound that we're going to make during this lesson. This whole sound just took a little bit under 10 minutes to create, and you can do the same very easily. All right, let's go ahead and begin the lesson. Okay, to start off, what I'll do is just drag the operator instrument into live. Over on the live devices, and I'll just open up the instruments folder and just find operator right here, and I'll go ahead and drag that into the, uh, to the arrangement view, and that'll create a new MIDI channel with the instrument placed here. Okay, great. After this, I want you to locate the reverb, the stock reverb that Live gives you. It works just fine. It's right here. I'll go ahead and click and drag that right next to the operator instrument. Perfect. All right, so to hear the instrument, what we must do is arm the track. Uh, so make sure that it's armed. Go over here and just click right here, and you can hear the sound. By default, Ableton makes all the oscillators the sine wave. But we can change that very easily. Make sure that oscillator A is selected right here. And just go right over here where it says wave. Click right here and a menu will pop down. Just moving off the screen here, I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom and select the triangle wave. Next, I'm going to adjust the amp for the sound, so I'll go ahead and click on Envelope. And I want the sound to slowly fade in when I press the keys on the keyboard. So let's create a really long attack. Let's go ahead and hear. Next, I'm going to make a long release time. This way, when I lift my hand off the keyboard, the sound continues to play and slowly fades out. Listen. Okay, I'll release the keys. All right, next, let's go ahead and turn up the level on oscillator B, which is right here. I'll go ahead and click here and turn this up. Now, by default, the same thing. We have to change the wave to anything else we want, so I'll just drag down here, come down to the bottom of this menu, and select Triangle. And then I'll click on Envelope and adjust the envelope so the sound slowly fades in, or this oscillator slowly fades in and has a long release time. Let's go ahead and play everything back. Nice. I'll go ahead and release the keys. Okay. Here's a trick for creating drones. It really helps to have a filter. A filter, what it does, turned on, you can actually control the frequency cutoff. So we can reduce the amount of high frequencies that pass through, while still remaining the lower frequencies. This is the case, however, if we use a low-pass filter, which is currently selected by default. So let me go ahead and play here. I'm going to use my sustain pedal, my foot pedal down on the ground. Just push that. I'm going to hold the sound down and adjust the frequency. But I'm going to turn it down just a little bit so it's nice and warm sounding right here. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the basis of the sound. Next, one of the biggest parts of drones is reverb. Nice stereo reverb is the key here. But you want to be careful. Let's go over to the reverb real quick. The first thing I want you to change is the input processing. 
you don't want too much low in reverberating because sometimes it'll totally override the sound and you'll have some peak frequencies in there that can cause a little bit of ear fatigue and we, w- we don't want that happening to the person listening to the music so what I'll do is just go ahead and turn on low cut and just move this over just a tad bit just so we're cutting off some of the low end there okay for quality let's go ahead and turn the quality up to high and then the size is fine the stereo mm, you could probably leave it I would leave it right here or increase this a little bit wider but a hundred is good from right there but the most important thing is the decay time so you want a really long decay let's go ahead and play Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. The next step, what we're going to do is actually record operator. We're going to record ourselves playing to another track, such as an audio track. And then we're going to take that clip that we recorded and switch it up a little bit. So I'll go ahead and show you what I mean. Just under the operator channel anywhere, go ahead and create another audio channel. And then for this audio channel right here where it says EXT, which stands for external in, go ahead and click here and then select resampling. And then we're going to record onto this track, so you must arm the track. Okay, cool. And so I'll click back over on operator and if I press the keys, it should still play. Okay. So before I record, let me go ahead and tweak the sound just a little bit. Add a little bit more clarity by letting some of the high end through on the frequency cutoff. Listen to that. Then I'll double click the stop button on the control bar here and I'll go ahead and arm the track or I will start to record. But for this recording, what I'm going to do is turn off my microphone on this channel. So I'll turn the mic off and then I'll start to record the sound. Here we go. Okay, so that's pretty good. I'll go ahead and delete this MIDI clip here because I don't need that. All right, let's go ahead and hear the sound that we just recorded. All right, so we've recorded the reverb and everything. Because when you select resampling, Ableton just records back to itself on another channel. But let me give you a really, really good tip, and I wasn't able to do it during this video because of the screen capture software. But if you're going to record something, and if you're going to slow it down, the best thing to do is record it at a higher sample rate. So come over here to Live, Preferences, and go to Audio. And I would change this to 96 kilohertz. I mean, basically, this adds more samples to your sounds. So when you pitch them down, you're going to have higher quality. But keep in mind, don't always do this. It's uh, going to make a may make a higher file size. And it's always a good idea to work with only a 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate within your DAW. So make sure to just switch it back to 44.1 after you've changed it to 96. Also, right here where it says record warp and launch, a good idea to always do your recordings at 24 bit makes a little bit larger file but totally worth it i think live may default to 16. also make sure that your sound card supports these features too before you use them okay that sounds really good and let's go ahead and get back 
So the next part of this is to change this audio clip that we've recorded. I'll double click on it. And over here, we'll need to make sure that the warp is turned off. And make sure high Q is turned on. Because live gives us a better uh, transposition algorithm to work with when we have the higher quality turned on. And what I'll do is transpose this audio clip. Turn down the transpose to slow it down to a different key. Let's go ahead and listen to it back. And you can just see how warm this is. And would be warmer if it was recorded at a higher sample rate. But for this video, you get the idea. You can tell which sample rate the clip is by looking right here, 44.1 at 24 bit. All the information is right here for you. So we're running a little bit out of time, but what I'm going to do is just go ahead and zoom out here. And I'm going to make a duplicate of this clip. So I'll hold down the Option key on the keyboard, which is the Alt key on the PC, and drag out a copy. And then shorten this just a little bit here. Or better yet, what I'll do is just over overlap these two clips together. And then come over here to the Channel, Options, and select Fades. And that way I can fade from one clip to the other very smoothly, just like this. But for the duplicate clip that we've selected right here, or created, what I'm going to do is change the transposition. So it's just a little bit higher. So the chord changes over time as it goes into this next audio clip. Also, just to really take it over the top, I'm going to go ahead and add another second reverb onto this channel with a low cut, high quality, and a nice decay time. All right, let's go ahead and listen to everything back. My name's Mark. This is Ableton Daily. I hope you enjoy the lesson. And uh, please subscribe or send me a comment and let me know what you think. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Take care.